Hello, hello everybody and welcome to our LinkedIn live event today. I'm your host, Madalina Andre, and this is our 35th LinkedIn live event from Expat Nexus series, a series which has its main goal to become a place where we can share best practices in our industry, learn from each other, and most importantly, grow together. This event is part two from a series dedicated to the topic of remote work and is created in a joint partnership with Expertise Academy experts who will provide us with insights uh, in the legal compliance challenges of cross-border remote work and how to create an organizational structure that is fit for purpose. Uh, we have some interesting questions and answers today. Uh, this is the first live event that is uh, um, uh, more theoretical, let's say, compared to what we had so far. Uh, thanks to the valuable insights from our uh, fantastic expert panel here. Before giving the floor to uh, uh, our guests, I would like to thank all the attendees for joining us and for watching the event. Uh, please feel free to drop your comments, address your questions live. Um, we will do our best to cover them all. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Inge and Ernst. Um, and before uh, uh, continuing, just to wish everybody um um on the uh well across the pond right uh wishing all the american friends clients uh partners a happy and warm thanksgiving yeah um you're celebrating and we're working right so <laughs> uh for those for those of you not yet familiar uh with expat global yet is the first uh sustainable marketplace digital ecosystem uh in the global mobility sector to Put it simply, uh, the first e-commerce platform uh, that enables the direct relationship between local and regional experts and professionals offering services um, like, like immigration, visa, tax, social security, relocation, and corporate clients uh, in need of such services um, all around the world. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, Ernst and uh, uh, Inge, we have um, attendees uh, coming uh, coming up. Hello, everybody. Hello, Nuran. Hello, Mirella. Hello, Georgia. Uh, I have I have a bit of a delay in my in my uh, in my flow here, but uh, thank you all for uh, for watching. Uh, Inge, please, uh, you have the floor. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, uh, Madalina. Um, and also thank Expert Global for again uh, hosting this this uh, this event on cross border remote work. It's a very important topic, and it's Indeed. great that you that you are covering it. Thank you very much. We are thanking uh, you. So it's uh, in, in, indeed my name is uh, Inge Nietzsche, and um, just a short introduction of uh, Expertise Academy. Uh, I chair the academy. Uh, Better, I, I chaired a foundation since 2010. Uh, Expertise Foundation is an independent and non-commercial research and education institute dedicated, really fully dedicated to HR global mobility. And we were founded back in 2010 in collaboration with uh, international employers. Um, at the um, academy, we offer comprehensive education uh, that is wing to wing. So all disciplines that an HR uh, GM professional needs in, in their work, uh, we cover in a very, um, uh, uh, in, 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 in a way that it is really truly competency based and individualized. So you can see it here in the graph that uh, first we started mapping the competencies needed in every stage of the development path, and then we aligned it with education and uh, learning solutions. Yeah, just just a second, Inge. Can you can you please um, click again on the on the on the slide? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's um... okay. Yeah, this one. Yeah, perfect. I think I, yeah, yeah, excellent. Super. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have courses from uh, junior, from from onboarding uh, the onboarding phase up until and including a master course at the Erasmus University. Uh, since 2015, it's a fully online course. We have participants from all over the world and a terrific international faculty. And I noticed that there are quite some uh, students and alumni in the audience. So welcome, great to have you here. Um, Besides the comprehensive learning, we also offer on-demand learning. And uh, 
we have a, a special uh, catalog for that. And you can find uh, all sorts of very short, uh, very effective and efficient courses with video lessons, handbooks, uh, tests, uh, communities, all is there that you need for learning at the point of need 24 seven. Um, we also have next year, that's, uh, uh, that, that is news, uh, Content, continuous education and the first line support desk, especially for remote work and EU posted workers questions. So okay. that's for next year. Uh, of course, we also do research into trends and developments such as cross-border remote work. And uh, we share this information that we gathered in this research also with the academy so that we can always make sure that our courses, that our education are up to date. Yeah, we have we have uh, we have a lot of people coming uh, coming in. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us. Uh, the last one um, dropping a comment is Katerina Katerina Fagetti. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of one of your students and uh, one of our uh, former guest speakers as well. Yeah. Um, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Inge. Um, Ernst. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see you. I highly appreciate that you spend your time and energy to follow uh, um, events like this, uh, because it's uh, uh, very nice to speak uh, with a lot of colleagues. Um, I work together with uh, Inge in the Foundation of, uh, of Expertise, but also I'm uh, the chair of a platform of multinational companies in the Netherlands, uh, which all big companies are participating. And we have every week uh, a meeting of, of 30 minutes was very special because um, the heads of global mobility spent their time every week, uh, just half an hour to discuss all the priorities. Uh, Further, all, I'm also a head of compensation benefits uh, a platform in the Netherlands and job evaluation. So that's uh, for today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ernst. So, so as I was saying at the beginning, um, and I'll just reiterate it for the attendees who might have come a bit later, right? The event today evolves around navigating remote uh, work challenges in the HR practice. Uh, and it's the second event in a series dedicated to the cross-border remote work. Uh, to, better, to better understand the full and entire impact uh, of cross-border remote work uh, on the HR practice, I believe it's better first perhaps to take a bit of a step back right uh, and try to make a brief recap of what we discussed uh, during the previous uh, uh, event that we that we held together on the legal compliance challenges uh, inge will you do the honors please yes indeed uh, because when we are talking about cross border remote work what always comes up is the major challenge as it is seen in practice of legal compliance uh, that that is really a barrier for implementing remote work in mm -hmm. the HR practice. Uh, but to look at the bigger picture, and that is what we uh, will be doing with you today, it's um, it's 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 best that we take a step back and indeed have a recap of what are we talking about when it is on uh, legal compliance, because it is seen as a major major challenge and in, in many organizations it is a showstopper for implementing cross-border remote work um, so let's first explain the, the compliance angle and uh, when we're talking about remote work then effectively it is a separation between where the work is being performed and the base location of the employer that is that is asking the worker to do the work and when that separation is present, we are talking about remote work. And it isn't a new phenomenon because we all know, we all are familiar with international uh, long-term assignments and short-term assignments and cross-border commuters, uh, international business travelers, even the odd uh, uh, digital nomad. Uh, so we always have been working with remote workers. Uh, but what is special uh, nowadays is that this remit has been increased with other type of remote workers. Mm -hmm. And that is the case when, not as in previous cases, or of course they are still here with us, but the traditional cases where the people were moving 
were being moved to work. Now, since the pandemic, we are moving jobs to people across country borders, and that is new. And um, this form of remote work really offers unprecedented opportunities, many advantages for both the business and, and its workforce. So that is why, on the one hand, it's very popular, mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, uh, we have to do with legal compliance. And um, the, the problem is that above um, or next to the traditional forms of, of moving um, uh, work, uh, to the to the uh, uh, moving people to the work, these new forms of deployment where we are moving jobs to people um, brought about many new forms of deployment. Uh, as listed yeah. here, the virtual assignment, the the digital nomad now in the form of an employee rather than before in the form of freelancers. Mm -hmm. Uh, the working sabbatical now that is the first one we came across a couple of weeks ago when we had our uh, in-person oh, i have to admit i've never heard of a working sabbatical no, is it a no, sabbatical or are you working you know <laughs> which yeah. one is it <laughs> and, and as it was explained to us by yeah. by one of our speakers during our conference uh this was a request of an employee oh a regular employee working in uh in in, in the company of that employer in the Netherlands, but that's really interesting. Can you can you expand a bit on that? What exactly yeah, is an is an employee that is working on a sabbatical? Exactly, and 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 asking and requesting uh, his employer um, for a sabbatical leave, unpaid, but to finance. He, he was planning a, a, a world tour, so to to finance the next station of that world tour, he wanted to take up his work again from wherever he was at the moment. So that was a sabbatical leave in combination with still working as an employee, but only when it, it was, was suitable and, 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 and for, the employee. Yeah. for the employee. So that was the first. And there will be, we gather more of these particular forms of deployments that really has a, a huge impact on the HR uh, uh, department because it's still a huge remit of remote work but mm -hmm. now on top of that all these new forms and of course the expat uh, uh, the, the traditional expat assignments they are decreasing uh, we, we all know that it's been happening for, for for quite some years but on top of what is remaining in the hr especially in the hr uh, global mobility department are these other traditional forms and on top of that these new forms uh and it, it also says here the customized workplace i came across mm -hmm. that um that 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 concept uh just a couple of days ago i think it was the invention of uh, one of our very precious uh, faculty members von strompenars and it really says it all eh? a customer a customized workplace so uh many uh, uh, changes, many, many uh, challenges, uh, and one of them indeed is legal compliance, because uh, when we're talking about cross-border um, um, remote work, we're talking about multiple countries. And when we talk about multiple countries, we are also talking about multiple jurisdictions, because each country has its own jurisdictions in terms of uh, employment law, uh, income tax, social security, immigration, duty of care, pension, payroll, and so on and so forth. And these disciplines, also when we're looking at it uh, um, for one country, are very much entangled and mm -hmm. very much uh, interrelated. You can't look at one of these disciplines and neglecting the others. They, are, they, they belong to, to each other. When you talk about immigration, you also must look into all the other aspects of social security, income tax, employment law, and so on. So let alone when um, you're talking about multiple countries. That's, where, that's when the fun begins. That's where the fun begins, absolutely. Especially when you have sufficient uh, resources, so you have plenty of staff to do it and plenty of budget to, uh, to, to hire your consultants and whatever, then it's fun. But of course, that's not the reality uh, where we come from. Uh, so, and, and here is the core of the 
problem with compliance in combination with cross-border remote work. You are dealing with two huge Gordian knots that you need to reconcile because you have to comply and have to be compliant in both countries. And each country wants its fair share of tax revenues and want to know exactly who is entering their territory and who is working there and staying there. They also want to know that there will be sufficient uh, social security contributions uh, to, to pay out all these entitlements. Uh, they want to protect their domestic labor market. Yeah. So these countries are competing. Uh, for each country, we have to make sure that in that, uh, that area, in that jurisdiction, we were compliant. Um, but the reality is that compliancy is, well, close to impossible. It is impossible, mm -hmm. in fact. So the risk of running into non-compliance is real. Uh, the risk of getting caught on non-compliance is real because the, these authorities, they are uh, exchanging information with, with each other, also cross-border. And when you are caught on non-compliance, the repercussions are really severe. But we're, because we're not only talking about financial damage, we also talk about, and even 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 more importantly, about reputational damage. And no com no organization, no company wants to have its name in the headlines on the front page of a newspaper. So here is the 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 the, the, the pain of compliance in combination with cross-border work. Amazing, amazing, Inge. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Well, and, and uh, that's yeah. also something, the genie is yeah. out of the bottle there. Eh? Um, remote work is here to stay. We see a dramatic increase of the uh, HRGM remit. Mm -hmm. and not, not sufficient, not adequate resources. Um, and on top of that, as I mentioned before at the start of this presentation, Compliance is only one of the challenges. So um, when we look at um, this, 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 this dilemma, uh, we started with investigating uh, because we already saw what was going to happen. Of course, we didn't foresee the pandemic and we didn't foresee the war in, in Ukraine and, and the energy uh, crisis and, and the inflation. But back in 2014, we already saw that HRGM was going to be a very important part of HR because of this complexity. And uh, we started our research, um, it's mentioned here, going down the rabbit hole because that mm -hmm. was our journey. Uh, and, and you know a rabbit hole, it has many tunnels and each tunnel is leading to yet another rabbit hole. Uh, so that it was a, a really... A, a, Confusing, confusing, disorientating journey mm -hmm. into a huge complexity of interests and um, different angles, different perspectives, different uh, uh, dilemmas, uh, different solutions. Uh, and now we are coming to the point. Uh, it's also been covered by the conferences. We are organizing. Uh, um, uh, since since uh, earlier this year, uh, that face to face face to face seminars, face to, right? yeah, all all in person the conferences. Mm -hmm. That um, well, the next slide shows it. This is the new reality. We're already yeah. living in the in the in the fourth revolution, maybe the five industrial uh, fifth industrial re uh, uh, revolution, but now we are entering into a human capital revolution well thank you thank sorry. you thank you Inge. uh just to uh, uh sorry sorry Ernst. just to, just to recap a bit what what uh Inge, Inge uh mentioned so focusing solely on the compliance angle right and dismissing uh remote work opportunities for the reason of its complexity right can put organizations out there at risk of losing relevant and needed talent but on the other hand, implementing the entitlement of remote work uh, and ignoring the red flags uh, can also put organizations uh, at risk in terms of non-compliance, repercussions and financial or reputational damages and risks, right? 
in other words, we need to go all the way down the rabbit hole. I really love that metaphor, Inge. Uh, explore all angles uh, and all the implications uh, before dismissing or fully adopting remote work scenarios, right? Yeah. Um, so let's let's take a, a closer look at this at this new reality, uh, Ernst. Well, thank you. Um, well, for, for many years, we have seen a lot of movements uh, in HR. As, uh, HR uh, uh, was reported to head office or local, or uh, we've seen a lot of changes. Uh, but the difference today that I see, it's, it's, it's a more a, a revolution because there's a lot I of ceasing. Yeah, yeah, and I see. I'm serious. I'm really sorry, Ernst, but I see this 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 list here, and it looks like a perfect storm to me, right? <laughs> it, indeed, it is a per perfect storm because a lot of things are happening and changes. Uh, but more impo in, um, importantly, and what's different with with the past, that it are almost all kind of changes which are uh, irreversible. You can't uh, return if people are used mm -hmm. to work at home, and and they are they're used to it and they do not have any big problems like they faced in the first stage of working at home. It's very difficult to, to, to get them back to the office because okay. you have better life balance, they do not have uh, traveling times, etc. But but we see a lot of, of, of battles around the world for skills, for, 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 for labor, raw materials, energy, new markets, trusted data, new technologies so a lot of things are happening at the same time on different places on the earth yeah it would be amazing if if the attendees uh, uh watching us uh, uh over over uh, uh 70 people here uh to 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 let us know their uh their thoughts about it right um uh, the battle the, well the battle they have experienced uh, uh their their insights on that please please ernst yeah and well a lot of people think well it has to do with covid but but trust me even before COVID, uh, this movement was already on, on, on uh, going on. Mm -hmm. But what is different in the, at the start of the of the of the, of the pandemic, uh, the management had to accept that people are working at home. And people working at home, they believe in the job and a fight to to survive in the job because they realized that they had to work to 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 keep to the the company working. So the management had to accept the way people are working. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you if you would have asked managers at the, before COVID, was it possible that people work independently at home and, and produce a better uh, uh, quality and quantity of work? Yeah, majority would have said no. No way. Indeed, and now a lot of managers are confronted with the result that that the outcome is is very good. And what we see in our platforms is that the discussion at the top of the uh, of the company is between the top management and senior uh, management level. Well, top management said, well, I want to see all the people in my office. But the layers be, be down, well, they know the reality and said, well, it's impossible because people are moving around, like to work at home, have uh, different careers, different opportunities. So we see a lot of debate in the top of the companies. And that's True. what I mean. That is a kind of a, a kind of a refli a revolution because we see a lot of things happen what uh, what we never saw before uh, at this stage and that intense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it seems it seems um, a lot of the uh, um, labor market currently is is driven by the employees, right? From from what I'm getting. Um, yeah. Would you say this is the reality? Uh, is, is is this just an uh, overstatement, an exaggeration? No, no, not not on the country because uh, there is a lack and almost globally on talented uh, talented educated uh, uh, employees. So what we what we see in the Netherlands, but also in, in Switzerland and Belgium, uh, so the, the most Western European uh, European companies is that uh, that there's a need of, of talented people. So. Um, the departments uh, responsible for hire uh, people, they, they try to hire people around the globe. So, so the reality is that um, we see uh, people coming to, to Western Europe from different places with different cultures. But at the meantime, uh, in the Netherlands and Belgium, uh, we, do not have, we do not have houses for our own people. Mm -hmm. So we do not have houses for the people uh, we hire as local hires. Uh, a big company in the center part of the Netherlands hired this this quarter 
1,000 employees. There are no houses. We have yeah. problems with, with, with schooling. We have problems to uh, facilitate them with... Uh, with um, basic, basic necessities. Yeah. Indeed. So what we see now, that, that's the next step, that they hire local hires. Eh? Everyone knows what local hires say. Eh? You hire people from a foreign part, uh, a country. You ask them to come uh, to your country to do the work. But now they are sending the local hires away back to their home countries and let do them the work from distance. Well, because of because of that situation. Because that's yeah. the place, yes. But also because the minister finds out that work on the distant issue is possible. And at the moment they realize that it's possible and deliver good results. Oh my God, that's good. That's cheap. That gives a lot of possibilities. You see? True. So a lot of changes are happening now at the same time. Yeah, which amazing. Is our, amazing. Which in our field is very interesting uh, because... And that's one of the of the uh, of the the, the 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 important points for for today. What we see is up to now, and I think I will repeat it many times because it is really important to realize the following. Until now, multinational companies are not multinational. They are multinational if you look at how they were, how they um, buy the stuff, how they produce, and the logistics. But Three weeks ago, I had the, the, the discussion was with one of the managers of a big company in the lands responsible for Europe. He said, Ernst, I have, I'm responsible for eight countries. I have to deal with eight HR officers. They do know anything about another country. But my people I'm responsible for are moving around constantly. And not all, I like to move them, but also the people like to move because they li like to work from distant places, they have a new uh, boyfriend or girl, girlfriend. So yeah. it's, it's almost impossible what's happening now. So on that element, HR, companies are not truly international because so far on this point, uh, the specialists of the global mobility department, they are responsible for international mobility. Well, I can yeah. give you a thing. I Yes. Just, just, just one second, Ernst. We have, we have a comment uh, from John, uh, John Rayson. I, I was just about to say uh, uh, our audience is pretty shy today, so thank you, John, for uh, for your comment. Uh, our recent research talking to different sectors is interesting. Some we were organized um, and identified the red flags and who can do cross-border remote working, and others were managing situationally. Board mindset and culture plays uh, a really important factor and education and government uh, and governance sorry it really does vary by sector yeah. Yeah. Hi. well thank you john <laughs> john is one of my biggest friends in, in the in in this field and we know each other for many years and i think that's a good remark because indeed what we see that uh, it's a huge difference of culture because yeah, if you right. hire some, somebody for, uh, within europe and besides all the nitty-gritty of your Euro, uh, european regulation which make it possible to work within europe but if you have some uh, a person from Af afghanistan what what's currently happening well it's a huge difference of culture so people believe they come to the promised land with an island at the, uh, uh, at the moment is not and the biggest yeah. point is if, if i i would like to give you a number uh, one of the big international companies, not a Dutch, uh, Dutch firm, but, but based in Switzerland, and they asked me to find out to what extent uh, people are working international. I said, well, let's start with, with Spain. At Spain. In Spain, they have 45 expats working. Expats means that you pay the houses, you pay the schooling, you do everything. And I investigated to what extent those people are working in Spain the last year. And the answer was? 50% was working from a different country, from Italy or France or Germany, because they have a boyfriend, new relationship, or they have a second house. So of the population, we, we should know where they going to where they work and live. 50% was not reality. So you can imagine that the people who are traveling around, business travel, but also people during the holidays are, are uh, staying at a different place, most of the companies mm. do not have a slight of idea. And this growing group of, of people with the complexity of the way they performed and, 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 and the places they work from and for other places, global mobility cannot control that. 
So we have to become truly international through in, truly international, thank you, Inge, uh, through uh, truly international HR specialists. And Madalena, yeah. that's a big, that's a duke to uh, stand us because first we have, we have to make them aware of the new reality. Yeah. And it's difficult because, because as long as they do not understand, they do not see that their employees are eff effectively not working and living in the country they 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 supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. They do not know. And 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 so far, well, we pampered them for many many decades. Or well, if it comes complex, it has to do with with social security. It has to do with with income tax. Well, give it to me. Give it to global mobility. We have experts. Mm -hmm. We we take care of it. But it's not been possible. So we have to change the whole uh, whole system. We have to educate uh, all those people. Some companies do. Some companies come to expert, uh, expertise and help and ask me help us with basic training, at least to to bring that awareness followed by understanding. And they do not. They do, so don't have to do anything. But we have to avoid that manager using internet. And make their own decision together with their employees and leave HR out because HR always said, well, it's not impossible. It takes yeah. a little bit many times. Uh, we cannot do it. Well, COVID showed and uh, and demonstrated to it. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. 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 I have to interrupt you, Ernst, uh, 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 because we have uh, we have another uh, another comment. Hopefully, I'll be able to read it in full. Ankit, hello. Um, I believe one needs to classify remote worker definition to an industry standard. Uh, feel right now, while talking about remote worker, the HR mobility managers have way many thoughts running into their minds with types we have today. Yeah? With that, compliance take a backseat against categories. I'm really sorry, I can't see different companies, different challenges. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Well, well, our habit in HR and most most organizations that at, at the moment something new arise we go to our booklets we go to our policies and we try to rewrite the policies and and put uh, a net and uh, another page to to make the, the policy what we all already have if you look to Tesla it's only four pages because it's very simple and um, so, so the policies I'm working for, I'm working uh, and I'm defining uh, new po international policies for some really big companies in, in, in Europe. Those policies start with the employee, which is by definition an international. Mm -hmm. Well, all the empl employees are, well, working and living locally. It's a kind of a Zach exception. So all the policies are based on, on, on international because that's the only way to start a good policy. You can apply it worldwide, and that we have to do. Because yeah. if you, if you try to define all the different um, employment arrangements, all all the consequences of those arrangements, you you get a very th thick booklet. But if you start with an international employee which can uh, perform to the work from anywhere to, to anywhere, then the whole definition starts with, with a new angle point. John mentions that framework, not policies, or we will be rewriting them all the time. Yeah, indeed, indeed, yeah. indeed. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, uh, uh, Ernst, if there is any uh, um, uh, difference in the manner of responding to this? I mean, is there a different approach that uh, large companies or smaller companies um, or startups oh, yes. uh, oh, yes. can approach this in a different manner or is like one recipe uh, um, for everybody? No, what is it? There are some, but only a few really big companies who make the change. I'm working for them. But the majority of, of international companies are think, still thinking local because they have to deal with hundreds of HR people who do not have the slightest idea about international working. If I would ask in, in, an employee in, in Belgium or Switzerland or the Netherlands about their own social security system and the consequences um, uh, the, the, the moment a person is work, working abroad, they start to become in panic. Mm -hmm. Which is the very basic question you should raise at at the moment. At, at the moment, but if you look at small companies, small companies are much smarter because they are realistic and they're not okay. 
<laughs> we have to work internationally. So that's a start, uh, that's a starting point by by nature. If you see that all your competitors are outside of the Netherlands, what to do with the Netherlands? It also makes it very complex for, uh, for them to, to, to get access to, to all the knowledge and experience and support you might need. And that's that's a point Inge is, is working on very hard to provide even the small companies with the highest standard of, of, of uh, information. Because uh, in, in fact, if you are rep representing a small company or Philips or, or Unilever or, or Danone, if you work uh, abroad, you are confronted with the same challenges. Mm -hmm. And and what we see now that thousands of, of small Dutch companies, but not only small, but also in Switzerland and Germany, um, are competing internationally because they have to. So uh, they are they make a giant leap in in progress, and all the old fashioned big companies they think they can suffice because they're looking inside. And that that yeah. will cause a, a problem. Okay, let's go yeah, to the yeah. next slide, please. Yeah, just just one more uh, remark because um, the comments made earlier, also by John and uh, I think it was Pete. Um, I, this is this is really the yeah. This is a very very important um, thing that comes up. Um, and I, I and I think it's not only that we have to make a differentiation in in industry, but uh, in fact we we all as an organization will have to go back to the drawing table, and start from scratch, have, rethink what is the purpose of the organization we're working for, and uh, and 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 establish what is the phase of internationalization what is its maturity also in terms of governance and and uh, uh, risk appetite it's also very important to know um, also the cultural identity of the organization not only the persons working in that organization but the organizational culture not only in wording but also in behavior how do we want our people to behave towards each, each other uh, and also what are Currently, the business imperatives and objectives and the business strategy, are we still aligned with that strategy as, as HR? Um, and, and indeed, a difference in the, 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 the big companies, uh, the multinational companies that aren't internationally in, in mindset, but also the, uh, the smaller, uh, mid-sized companies and, of course, the startups, they all think and the fast growing companies that are smaller and they can exactly. scale up very yeah, fast and and, yeah. and in terms of of um cultural identity uh also in relation with with the compliance uh, dilemma is that uh, it, it's really difficult for them but because especially these startups and fast growing com companies they really think that these legal compliance uh, requirements um don't don't count for them and uh, mm -hmm. because they are pioneers and, and they need to have space to travel all the world without uh, taking care of all these uh, requirements. Okay. Um, so That's we really need to go back to the drawing table. That is, I think, and, and not immediately jump into policy making. Yeah. Inga, let's, let's go back one slide uh, of the iceberg. Yeah. Yeah, you see it? Okay. That's one. Uh, because I, I think this is pre express what's really happening. Because the top of the, our organ organization are looking right. They 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 strive to survive. They beat all, all the all the challenges they have. We had we we discussed uh, so far uh, uh, together. So they are fully concentrate outside of their organizations. But inside the organizations, the really change are happening. The people who are not uh, uh, loyal to the companies like they were before, because people have multiple jobs. People like to work from different uh, situations. Uh, people with uh, friends with dual careers. Yes. Sure. So that's are the really change in what's happening. And what will happen? And sometimes, and and I think I can see it already happening in some companies that. The change within the organization is out of the scope, out of the sight of the top. And what's happening in reality, and that also will happen with, with organization, they will tip. 
And if they are tipped, they cannot return back. And the point is that, and that's very, well, a challenge to say that, but I was many years ago responsible for Heineken uh, uh, management development worldwide. So I was responsible for hiring and tracking top management, including board. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I look to the current generations of top managers and CEOs of, of the most of the companies, they are hired in the face of a company for a decade ago. Being global, uh, corporate image, high revenues, etc. The game what's currently is, is, is happening is totally different. So if I looked at the companies those people are hired for are not matching with the companies the competencies needed to both stay alive in the commercial environment with a lot of shocks, but also uh, secure that your organization is lively and competent and, and robust for the next phase. And that's the really point. That's why the top of company said, well, I want to see the people. And, and the layers below, it's not doable. It's impossible. The company is still asking, said, well, thousand people have to come to the Netherlands. Why everyone, men and girl in the street can say, we do not have houses. We do not have medical support. We do not have schoolings. Today, I was confronted with a case that a, a family coming from Af Afghanistan with five children placed on three schools, medical doctor 40 miles away. That's reality. But still the people in the in the department response for hiring said, well, we have to hire. And Global Mobility said, okay, please, let's try to move those people back to Afghanistan and make it possible that you work from their places. Yeah. And then they have to deal with questions, okay, okay, well, should we give them a, a, a computer or something like that? That is the kind of, of challenges companies have. Yeah. Would you would you say, Ernst, that this would mean a revolution in the HR as well? It's more an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be to, to be honest, when I see a percent a percent of, of a company said, well, we, we go to the next phase because we see that, that the level of our HR is not at the level of our of, of the other disciplines, like in finance, like but market. why? Why is the HR not at the level? I don't know. I work for 40 no, but, but Madalena, let's be practical. And we, we together we walk to 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 to, to a, a big plant, yes. And we make a walk together with the with the plant manager. And the plant manager will will show you all 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 the uh, all the machines. And, and he knows exactly. He said, "Well, Madalena, that that machine is work perfectly. It uses a high a high level of energy. But when I have to change to another product, it's easily done." And then he will show you another another machine and said, well, he knows everything. He knows yeah. everything about the employees. He said, well, if something is really serious, I ask Peter because people help me out. You're not. John's a nice, a nice guy, but you can do that. If you would invite the HR personnel responsible for the same place, and you ask him, um, okay, what what's he, the, what, what is the average um, uh, level of education? How how long is uh, uh, are people on average on on the place? Uh, what is percentage of men or female, etc. Basic information. Trust me, they do not know. And why do do not know? I'm heading what I explained in my introduction. I'm also responsible for uh, for a platform of the heads of, of uh, job information and compensation and benefits in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. In this platform, it's common sense that they said, well, we do not have reliable information at the same level, finance has the same level marketing have. Half years ago, I was, uh, no longer, because it was uh, like one of the Christmas uh, meetings. And I, I, I saw a, a, a guy of my, my age and he, he, he did a much better job because he was, he was a CEO. And I asked him, I challenge him, I said, well, I, I come to challenge you. What do you know about your clients? It was a fast moving consumer company. He said, Ernst, I know everything. Because we track and follow everything what we can. We know, we know even more about them as they know about themselves. Wow. Yeah. I said the same. I said, wow. What I'm not sure if I like 
to be scared or to be, you know, that's <laughs> it's, it's 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 reality, yeah. It's okay. It's 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 still statistics, but it is okay. And then I said, do you have that quality of information also from your own organization? And he said, Ernst, I hate you. You're damned right. We don't have. have. And that's the point. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to, to interrupt you again because we have a, a comment from uh, Mateus. Uh, HR is such a capacious term that it's impossible to gather all information and be prepared for everything. Sure. That's why HR and international mobility should closely cooperate to provide the business the best solutions, warnings, updates, and so yeah. on. In yeah, one, one of the big, yeah, it's one of the big drives today. One challenge is indeed is improve the quality of information of, of HR. But we in, in the field as, as global mobility, we know if you... Uh, start an assignment for an expat. Uh, you have to triple check all the information uh, you needed to comply with the Im immigration or tax uh, forms, and you frequently have to find out that the information is not up to date, etc. So I'm not blaming yeah. those people, uh, certainly not, but it's a reality, and yeah. and that means that that the change to become truly international is is a huge challenge. It is. It is. John also comments that data drives insights. Otherwise, what HR says only views outside in thinking like it earnest. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yes, we have we have a lot of discussion together about the subject. And uh, well, it's it's good to have colleagues like like this. Hello, Nuran. Lovely to see you here. Collaboration is the future and the only way forward. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And I think collaboration is a good point because um, a lot of our colleagues in HR uh, uh, they see it as very difficult to to get into contact with with uh, with the financial department. I'll give you an example. If you work uh, very long from uh, from um, uh, position outside your country, there might be a financial tax risk for the company. Well, we thought yeah. that that those people in finance would be interesting in this kind of information. Yeah, they should, yeah. Yeah, but they're not because it's it's a lot of work, and they had to to to, to explain to the board level. Hey guys, we have a a, 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 a permanent establishment. Yeah, we have a P around yes. the corner. <laughs> yes, we, we 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 have a case, and then the board said, Ah, we don't want it. No, it is. <laughs> so it's also a message. Okay, who is going to deliver that the the, the emperor is not uh, not uh, wearing any clothes? Yeah. That, that's the that's the whole point. And in yeah. a small company, you cannot hide this kind of information. So so I'm yeah. not blaming our colleagues. I help them, but first of that, be aware. Be aware that the that the present is totally different from, from the past and don't think it come back. It's impossible. The way I uh, we all in my generation, but also the younger uh, generation, learn the stuff of on the university with big books, with, with big extra, etc. Is totally different of the way we have to educate today people, and the same happens in organization, because we see that people with only a few years of experience are responsible for global mobility or 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 even compensation benefits. Yeah, it's only doable if we as as ex, uh, experts provide them with the right information on a different way than we did in the past in in, in the university. Hi, Inga, where I am on the presentation, because you're always my guide. <laughs> <I'm> completely <laughs> lost. <laughs> Inga, Inga, I think I think we can go. We can go at the uh, yeah. uh, the man who is upset, right, Ernst? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's a um, very upset man. <laughs> but I, I I love the comment comments I I I got uh, I received from the people who yeah. are attending this yeah, uh, this and, platform. And indeed, it is it is. Uh, going forward uh, towards a, a solution or at least an approach to a solution. Indeed, it is a matter of collaboration, but that's not enough. Um, mm -hmm. It is because also one of the issues that we're facing is, of course, awareness. Uh, the, um, we in, in HRGM, we feel what the new re reality looks like. Uh, but let's say local HR, also comp and band colleagues, uh, let alone the, the line manager or even the C-suite, they, they are not aware enough of the situation that is unfold, unfolding. 
And uh, what we miss in this whole discussion and, and trying to, to get to a resolve of the many dilemmas is ownership. Uh, there isn't at the moment mm -hmm. a function or a, a role that takes the ownership and drives us to the, to the solution. Well, um, it, 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 it might help if we had at what level a person who is responsible, yeah. really responsible for compensation benefits. Absolutely. And not, not a policy making like HR, where we can talk for many hours with, without any data, but really uh, a fact based driven discussion, like at the same level as finance, same level as, as production. Uh, and and, and, and that, that's, that's a whole point. Yeah, if, if we, have... we also must be real, realistic, and and um, establish that uh, in in the area of of Compenben, they are far too busy with with all kinds of executive yeah. uh, uh, well, rewards and 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 very. Well, I, I see I see a very nice comment about guidelines will need to improve over time. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Jyoti Jyoti Mahi, need... lovely, lovely seeing you here. Thank you for joining. Exactly, yeah. guidelines will need to be improvised over time. Take it as it comes, adaptability uh, and willingness to, uh, uh, sorry, willingness of leadership is key for uh, for change yeah. management. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, but what we need in the first place is vision. Is vision, is, is, is the vision how you establish a truly international company. Yeah. And not like we have to, to, to work today, where a manager and, and, and the global mobility office together try to repair it, it's it's a kind of and then you change again tomorrow and then you change again in a week and and so on yeah yeah, yeah well that is what happened yeah. yes look at tesla it's possible and tesla is not my favorite car to be honest but the, but the mindset the same mindset i see in, in young uh, dynamic uh, companies and small companies uh and then they say well it's possible people it it's doable and I all also understand when you work in a very big international company, uh, successful for many years, which is now very stressfully because it's no longer successfully, that it's extremely difficult to change as an individual uh, the way of working and think uh, 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 and thinking because raising your finger it's very risky for your finger. <laughs> True. We have we have another comment from uh, Imelda Imelda Keen. Uh, data from the talent team will help the C-suite. Uh, when the data says that you are losing hires to companies that will hire from anywhere and or allow remote work, then the change and the message can come from the top down. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah I hope so. I hope so. So yeah. far, uh, we experience in many other uh, cases that there are barriers coming from top down and uh, reaching the, the, the workflow. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, so it's a, a huge difference between the top and the bottom of organization. Uh, because we, we still believe that uh, at the moment people and uh, the companies that uh, we have to guide them and to tell them and explain everything, while at the moment they work at home from the computers, they can do everything. So the whole concept of, of being a manager should be changed as well. And that's also right. what I mean with, with revolution, because we should realize that the, the period behind us showed us very, very clearly that people can work independently. And not all times, not in any cases, etc. Yeah. cetera, you know. Yeah. But there was a kind of a window when, when we saw a, a different kind of an employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we should take the benefit of that. And I see some companies do. Uh, the, the biggest flower market in the, in the Netherlands, they, uh, uh, they uh, offer all the employees a new employment contract with the base at home. They only come to, uh, to the office uh, for, for uh, well, to meet and greet uh, meetings like that, but they work, they perform at home. A totally new concept. And what, was, what I saw uh, the following, that the old thick booklets of, of HR were burned because they were not functioning any longer in the no, in new situation. So they make new booklets, very simple, very de uh, dedicated, and the organization is working extremely well. Still, they're an, under high pressure because all the the people who provide flowers to, to that organization have a big problem with energy. But thanks to the fact that they 
change the whole system, the whole way of thinking, say so they are able to, to respond very flexible. And that, that's the yeah. point. So people at the people at the bottom in the organization, at the bottom of, of the icebergs, are becoming very flexible and dynamic. And that's why people are moving out. They say, well, I can work in independently. I can work. I will survive. And that will give the big change of uh, organization. But but we, can, but we can change it. We can change it if we make really our organization truly international. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, and, uh, already. Remarks. Um, because I see it's... it's only yeah. four minutes left. <laughs> um, uh, again, we we have to go back to the drawing table and start all over again, uh, reassessing, realigning, and and every uh, every function that is in the in the value chain where we also uh, are yeah. part of, um, and and also it's it's so very important to create awareness and that is also why we go on with our conferences in person and online and hopefully also with you uh, madalina uh, and 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 our message also to the audience is try and create and help with uh, raising awareness because it is as it says on the screen the future has arrived and uh, hr must step up to avoid becoming obsolete because um, the, the, the trends and developments are already there and they're pointing to a dot on the horizon that is very close and, and very real. Um, so, so let's work together huh, in terms yeah. of the, the comment of one of the, the uh, attendees. Let's collaborate and try to find a way forward to the ultimate uh, uh, resolution. And it's not one policy and it's not a, a framework or a guideline. We really need to build it up again from scratch. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just, I just, I, I just want to mention uh, uh, Kathleen, um, um, without hard data uh, to back up an argument for remote work, it's nearly impossible to persuade leaders to be open to a new different approach. Yes. Uh, thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, yes. Kathleen. Yes, yeah. really know I'm how, how many people how many yeah. people are really working from different places. But mm -hmm. I it's it's almost the end of, of, of our presentation. And yeah. well I feel myself very young again because I have the same feeling when I was very young and, and, and entered the big office of the of the chairman of Heineken and I told him a lot of problems. He said, Ernst, I don't want to hear problems, I want to hear solutions. Mm -hmm. Well today we shared we shared a lot of uh, of problems. But um, Inge and I, we can promise you that uh, the next uh, meeting, we will come with solution, with workable solutions. Because solutions and workable solutions, that's a huge uh, difference. And utopian ones. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, Alexandra Paulina, thank you very much for your comment. Ownership comes with unforeseen risks. That is why the leadership is reluctant to take solid steps. We're living in an era where we are very much open to all kinds of risks and leaders are cautious, I guess, right? They're being very careful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. we have to convince them with data. Otherwise, it's just an opinion. Yeah. So Inge, you so mentioned let's, that let's together. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned you mentioned Inge uh, a bit earlier that this is part two. Um, is there any part three, part four, part oh, yeah. five? Undoubtedly, <laughs> undoubtedly, because as you've noticed, it's it's really a huge um, package of um, uh, 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 it's a huge topic, perspectives, yeah. interests, opinions. Uh, so we're not there yet. No, there's a long way to go, but but we have a clear vision where we will, will, will be going. And see you next time. Yeah, amazing. So okay. that would that would uh, wrap up our uh, our session. Uh, it's been great. Thank you very much. We had wonderful comments. Um, the audience, I'm sure, they found it really really uh, interesting. Thanks a lot for taking the time to join us. Uh, thank you uh, to our expert speakers here for their uh, valuable knowledge. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, in case you need further expert advice uh, on remote work issues or you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to, uh, to our guests directly. Uh, I'm sure they'll be more than, uh, more than, more than happy to, uh, to support. Uh, until, uh, until next time, um, please feel free to follow us on social media uh, or head up to our, uh, to our website, uh, Expat Global, uh, book a demo with us. 
um, and see the first sustainable marketplace in the global mobility and how it can be a game, uh, a game changer uh, for your business. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, happy Thanksgiving uh, to American friends and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.